Hi, Alia. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. And yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this、uh, video with me today. I know we will have a lot to talk about. I know we will focus on your business, what you do, how you help the community out there. So let's、mm-hmm. start off by you telling us who you are. How did you establish Fat Fam Influence? Tell, tell us everything. Okay, so、um, I'm Aria, and、um, I established Fem Influence in March of this year. And I am the director and the founder of it. We basically started with the goals to reach women and young girls that are out there that need more education,、um, but need to be empowered a bit more、um, because they lack areas.、Um, In those specific topics like education, empowerment,、um, gender based violence, abuse,、mm-hmm. those kind of things. So we focus on that. And、um, it basically started off with me just having a passion for this. And from there, it just started going.、Um, I wanted to start it, start it for a while, and then I just put action to it this year. Okay. You are based in South Africa, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And do you serve the, the communities out there or is it more like virtual? So, we've actually been doing、um, actual physical、um, work. So, we've been to the communities, we've been to homes, that kind of thing. Okay. And what are some of the things that you have done so far, like when you have been physically in the communities or going to people's h o u s e So, we just began our first drive、um, last month and it was very, very successful. We actually、um, went to a homeless shelter that provides a home for girls that are either trafficked or they've been、um, sex trafficked or、um, something has happened with them. And when we went there, it was actually a school holiday. So, some of the girls weren't there. But the ones that were there, I was supposing that they don't have a home to go to. So they are at that home. And what we did was basically a pad drive, and we spoke to the girls about mental health,、um, hygiene.、Mm. We spent time with them, we played games with them.、Um, it, was, it was so fun, and it was so nice to see like, the difference that you can have,、um, even if it's a small group of people, because they really enjoyed us being there. And, We r e actually going to make another trip so that we can check up on them and see like how they're doing and stuff.、Mm-hmm. And usually, these people are around the world age. Like, I'm assuming you serve a certain like,、uh, ra- like range of、uh, age, I'm assuming, age range.、Uh, we actually do, but we are more.、Um, We, we focus on women and young girls. So, this specific drive, we, fo- we focused on the young girls.、Um, and I think the oldest girl that was there was actually 17 years old.、Um, so, yeah, that was the oldest. And when we focus on women, we do more like empowerment, also like educating them on、um, like your basic hygiene or mental health and that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's, and it's a good、um, initiative because I think、uh, when we were talking about this in, in our last week's recording, like I think some things such as mental health is it's a taboo for many cultures, for many countries.、Yes. Um, raising awareness is super important because a lot of people struggle with it, but we don't have a place to talk about it. So the fact that you guys go and talk about it, it just It's a, it just makes it normal. It's normal to talk、yes. about this, it's normal to feel those things. So it's,、um, mm-hmm. it's a nice initiative what you, guys,、um, what you guys do. Thank you, thank you. And then、uh, my other、um, question is、uh, like, you focus on many things. You talked about hygiene, you talked about、uh, mental health.、Um, You, you're focusing on women's health, like, you know, like one of the things that we like, I wanted to learn more is more about women's health. So,、mm-hmm. uh, what are some of the ways, like, what are some common matters? Why and how are you educating these people? Like, is it just going to their houses? Is it just going to the shelters?、Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to know more about it. 
So basically, we started doing women's mental health because it's such a, like you said, a taboo thing. You know, you don't, nobody really speaks about it, or if it's brought up, you're like mental health. You know, like oh, it's just one of those things. Um, and I think that specifically with women. Um, that's how it's perceived, and you could also say that about men because um, they're given that sort of masculine um, image where they cannot be um, emotional or they cannot be this or that, and we are basically targeting um, those kind of taboos, those kind of um, things that people think um, of women's mental health. And by doing that, we basically are going to focus on going to, um, I don't want to say underprivileged areas, more developing areas. Okay. So developing areas that are um, sort of struggling in that sense. Mm-hmm. So we go there and we're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk about what you can do to improve your mental health. Um, what are the signs of um, depression? What are the signs of anxiety? Um, and when we actually went to the home, one of the girls we would ask them like what's depression what do you think anxiety is and one of the girls actually brought up how um, being anxious or having depression you cut yourself and we were like okay so that is a part of it and the way we go about it is um, sort of addressing what it means how they can um, talk about it, who they can go to, um, and to not feel ashamed about it because when we brought up these topics, they were like, oh my God, yeah. like they'd cover their ears and they would just be like, oh, we were speaking about this. But we continued talking about it and eventually they warmed up to us and they listened to what we had to say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you try to create yeah. that safe space for them to open up yes. themselves, I see. Yes, yes. Okay, and when it comes to hygiene, what are some of the topics that you guys are tackling? Like, I also want to know if in South Africa, in um, South African schools, they also teach about these things when it comes to hygiene or not, or is it something that you are doing as an organization? Um, so I feel like it's not spoken about as much as we'd like in school specifically, because when I was in school personally, um, we weren't really taught these things. We were taught like basic hygiene, wash your hands, okay. always wash your hands. <laughs> when you're going to eat lunch, wash your hands, make sure like everything around you is clean. That is the basic hygiene that we've gotten. And one of the things that actually came about was after COVID, that's when everyone's hygiene was like, oh. you need to do this, you need to do that. But nobody spoke about, about like women and the girls and teaching them how to be hygienic or like feminine hygiene and stuff because it's completely different to any other type of hygiene that yeah. you want to maintain. And we focus on that. So we focus on feminine hygiene and educating young girls because most of them don't really understand mm-hmm. um, what it is they to do or um, how to properly dispose of um, products and how to take care of themselves during mm-hmm. um, their cycle and that kind of thing. So what we do is we teach them about their cycle and then we teach them how to take care of themselves, what you can do to like um, relieve pain or what you can do if you're feeling a certain way um, and how to not be embarrassed about it. Yeah. Honestly, this is such a... Um great initiative because i feel like i wish i i had that kind of education <laughs> when i was growing up i did not have it i did not have it so encountering this like for the first time it was really a lot of struggles i can imagine how you know you guys are trying to help out this like these people because i think it's such an important topic to talk about especially when it comes to hygiene like it's not just washing your hands it's a lot more than that um, <laughs> <A lot. laughs> and, exactly and at school they don't teach you any of these things like they none don't. of that no they don't and like and it goes back to like it goes back to the fact that the world is so unequal like we just have this whole issue of gender inequality and it, it is so true it is mm-hmm. so true and I just recently read a book which um, which is called Invisible Woman and it basically talks about how the world itself is just by default for men. So no one thinks about all these issues that we go through because men do not go through them. Um, mm-hmm. 
exactly. So, yeah. So what you guys are doing, I think it's um, it's great. Um, and I wanted to ask you, like, what are some other um, things that you guys do besides, you know, mental health, besides um, like this one about hygiene? Do you guys talk about like, let's say, self defense as well, or not yet? Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but one of the things we focus on is gender-based violence. So, um, South Africa is one of the um, has one of the highest um, crime rates when it comes to gender-based violence. Um, so we focus on that. And when I, because I have watched like a video or two like on social media about how uh, women go through this, um, how they get assaulted, how they get abused, um, now it continuously comes up. Um, interviews with these women and how they went through it what happened how it basically ruined their lives um after being abused or after being raped or just going through these things and because of that we focus on bringing light to the situation and actually showing people that this happens it is something that happens um and i feel like it's sort of, it's sort of overlooked sometimes, you know. Um, one of the things that we would um, see or hear people say is, "What was she wearing? Or oh, yes. what did she do?" And we, I just, I don't think that that is a a good representation of the whole situation because that shouldn't be something that should be a factor for this happening uh it shouldn't be happening right yeah uh, yeah it goes back to the fact that it's always our fault like if we get assaulted it's because of the way we approach people if it's because of the way we were dressing it's because of the way that we were uh, maybe too friendly with someone like it's always because of us when in reality the issue is is not us it's really not us it's just that it's it's just things are always perceived in the wrong um in the wrong way mm -hmm. um I, I did have another question because i know you're trying to educate like the community of women but do you also target men as well because i always feel like men are like the solution to this problem yeah. do you also have conversation with men do you try to educate men or or not so we've actually been um, like speaking about this and like speaking about what we're going to do, the initiatives we're going to do and stuff. And one of the things were um, reaching out to companies mm -hmm. and reaching out to schools to speak to the people at the company and at the school, not just girls. Okay. Including the men and the boys at school, because sometimes um, like boys are brought up in a home where their fathers or um, a male figure has done the same thing to either their pair, their mom or sister or some female figure and they think that it's right. Yeah. Um, and nobody tells them that it's wrong. So that's what we are going to do and focus on areas that are more prone to this because it's more in areas that are not developed, right. areas that are um, lacking education for these things and nobody goes there to explain to them this is wrong this is what gender-based violence is this is what rape is this is what assault is and it should not be happening and this yeah. is the consequences of happening yeah 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 i agree with you on that it's it's the way you are raised at home right like if you like have, have a certain issue traumas at home it impacts you as you grow up and you keep thinking mm -hmm. this, is, this is okay okay and these are trauma that we need that we carry and we never take time to to heal them definitely exactly so as we're approaching the end of this interview i do have one last question but you already touched upon it so maybe you can add something that you haven't talked about it's more about the initiatives that you have for next month and for the next years like what are your plans besides whatever you already just mentioned um, so one of the huge goals that I have um, for Fem Influence is to eventually make it international. Um, so I wanted to not only be in South Africa, I wanted to reach like bigger heights. I wanted to reach um, other countries, other places, not just South Africa, um, because I think it can do that. I definitely believe it can. So those are one of the goals that I have and I'm giving, giving us about a year or so to take it that far. 
um i mean if it's not a challenge then i don't think it's a goal so mm-hmm. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. one of the goals um and then the events that we having in this year we going to be having a gala which is going to be a fundraising gala so we're going to do that so that we can raise funds and push the initiative a bit more um and then another one is we're going to visit the home that we previously visited and we're going to do a vision board session with them because when we went there we could not i just feel like the girls uh they knew what they want to achieve and they have these goals but they don't put it out there because when we asked them what are your goals they were afraid to stand up and tell us what it was um and some of them were even shy to just put it out there so we said that this would be a great initiative to do so that they can sort of have some fun play around and see like okay when they wake up and they're going to see their vision board they this is what I want to achieve and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing um the other ones that we have actually we're going to do the disadvantaged areas so we're going to go to those areas um speak about all the issues gender based violence um educating them empowering them our tagline is actually educate empower and elevate so that's exactly what we're going to do um and yeah so we have quite a few things that we're going to be planning um for this year but there's not much time left in this year already um so yeah we're like four months uh we have like four five yeah. months left before we, like before <laughs> the pitch like it's crazy um but i do very much like the initiatives i love the initiatives of the gala uh i love the one about the vision board i can i'm big on vision board and i love it because it's um it's a creative way to express all your ideas and it's fun it's so much fun to create a vision board is so much fun it's so much mm-hmm. fun well this is the end of the interview but i do have five rapid fire questions for you are you ready <laughs> ready do i have to answer them like quickly or like You have to tell me what the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay, you need to okay. elaborate on the answer. Uh I don't want you to think too much either. So Okay. All right. <laughs> so here's my first question for you. If animals would talk, which animal do you think would be the rudest? The rudest. Um I think maybe like a lion. No, come on. I feel like because they're so you know they're the king of the jungle so like, <laughs> I feel <Duh>. like <laughs> I feel like there's a part of them that's going to need to be but rude. <laughs> All right. I'll take. Oh, well, I do like lions so you tell me. I also I like them but like you know. <laughs> All good. So, if you were an animal, what would you like to, what, what would you like to be? Um I think I would like to be a dog. Mm. Uh specifically, I think I give off golden retriever vibes, so I would love to be a golden retriever. Nice. Nice. I like it. Third question, favorite color? A uh, red. Red. Uh fourth question best quotation best Qu- quotation like you know um, quotes expressions that you like to live by anything is possible if you put your mind to it love that last question best gift you have ever received um the gift i could actually say is the opportunity to be part of the influence and start it um i feel like that was a gift that I, i was given the opportunity to do that that's one of my gifts the best gift nice i love it and you're doing amazing things so for sure that's like one of uh, like one of the best gifts ever so i think so Adia, thank you so much for being here with me today before we go do you want to tell us where people can uh, connect with you Um yeah so we can follow um Fem Influence on Instagram um it's fem underscore influence um full stop and then you can also connect with me on Instagram it's aria underscore midley and on there you'll find everything uh website um 
what we do, pictures of it, what we're doing next, how you can help, and so on. Perfect. Well, I will put all the links in the description below. And once again, Arya, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank you so much. Thank I you. loved it. Thank you.